ladies? Hey, are we on? Okay, so today's math class, uh, math class, language arts class, I wanted to show you folks, there is a YouTube channel, for, and it's called Roommate is Great because that's where, where I was beforehand. Room, excuse me, Room 8 is great, except for I don't want to make a new one because I have lots of videos, some, talk, some of them dating back further than when I had Joe and Chris and Jules, when I had some of the 8th graders and Hannah and... Sierra. So, but I want to show you if you go to my channel and then go to playlists, and then there's the um, research project formerly known as the fifth grade history fair, and there's our introduction, and there's you don't have to necessarily watch both versions of it. There's um, two versions of the nonfiction text, or three versions of the nonfiction text features lesson. That's what we did yesterday. And right now, um, by the end of today, there will be three versions of the writing <coughs> research questions video, which is what we're Why going to what uh, what we're going to do now. And this link is on the Porta Portal, and I did send it home to your parents in a newsletter, so you can see all of the videos. So, um, oh, I got it. I am going to. Um, be now doing a lesson today, which is about asking <coughs> questions to do Hello. your research. And did we just watch? <coughs> no, it looked the same, but it's not the exact same video. It's done by the same people, so it looks similar. So asking questions. Now on page eight, <coughs> in your that's okay. On page eight, okay. in your book eight and nine, there are. Um, different kinds of questions to help you think about your topic and to plan for your research. Now, you all can read this stuff. Yeah. I'd like right. But I also want to talk about and highlight some of the important things. Asking, asking questions is important. Because if you're just doing sports, well, what about sports? And there's different kinds of questions you can ask. The first type of question is factual questions. That answers who, what, when, where, those kinds of questions. So, Joe's thinking about baseball. Jackie Robinson in particular. So, who was Jackie Robinson? When did he live? Where did he play? Those are examples of factual questions. What sport did he play? Those are examples of factual questions. Hannah's thinking about Gettysburg. So, you know, when did Gettysburg become important? Where is Gettysburg located? Those are factual questions. Yes. Um, I'm doing music therapy. You're doing music therapy? Okay. Um, and one of my questions is, in what circumstance would someone do music therapy? Okay. So think about, well, as we do this, I'm going to come back to you. Think about whether that's a factual question or one of the following interpretive questions. Okay. So factual is pretty easy. Who, what, when, where, how. Interpretive questions. It has like five different types. The first one is hypothetical. How would today things be different today? So for Hannah's, how would life be different <coughs> if the South, the Confederate Army, had won the Civil War? That would be. That's a, that's a hypothetical question. You might want to think about that and do research about that. Would you find actual facts about that, or would they be? Thinking questions. Thinking questions. You'd have to think about what would make sense. A hypothetical question about sports would be, what if in baseball it was started out as primarily African Americans, Negroes, and it was a white person who joined like Jackie Robinson? That's a hypothetical. How would it be, things be different? The next set of interpretive questions are called predictions. What will the future look like based on the way it is now? So, um, I know in one of the other classes somebody's doing um, women in sports. Will women play all sports? <coughs> is it well, no, but this is a prediction. Will they? Based on what you know now. That's a predictive question. Or, um, are dolphins going to become extinct based on pollution of the ocean right now? Like 
those kinds of questions. So high. Another kind of interpretive question is a solution question. A solution, fancy word for solution. Another <coughs> word for solution is answer. Answer. Thank you, sir. So, what solutions could be offered to a problem that exists today? How can global warming be stopped? Um, how how can prejudice be stopped? Slavery still exists today, not in the United States, but in other parts of the world. So, how can what we learned about excuse me? How can what we learned about slavery when we fought the Civil War be used to help other countries? Solve that. We're not looking for answers right now. We're just talking about the kinds of questions. <coughs> Comparison questions. Finding that similarities and differences between your main subject and a similar subject. So our friend over there was writing about Jackie Robinson. I might compare Jackie Robinson's um, ability to join a professional baseball team with um, a woman <coughs> joining a professional football team. It would be hard to. It she would be hard, that? but that might be oh that might be that might be one of your comparison questions. And the last kind of interpretive question is a judgment question. Based on the information you find, what can you say is your informed opinion about the subject? We've done a lot of opinion work earlier. One way to think about questions is to go back to when you were in early elementary school. And who remembers KWL charts? Oh, I see a recognition here. I'm going to draw one up here. K W L. Yes, I remember that. What is that? And what does that stand for? Who remembers? Oh. Yes. No. No is right. Want to learn and learned. What I want to know. What I need to learn. Need to learn or what I want to learn, and what I did learn. So I know that cats, if I'm doing cats, cats have whiskers. I want to know when cats became, I'm going to say pets because domesticated is too long for me to write right now, but that would be the more appropriate term, scientific term. And what I learned is not all cats, or can be pets or domestic cats. So if you're having trouble thinking of questions, this kind of chart, a KWL, what I know, what I want to learn, what I have learned, can help you with that. Will you have what I have learned filled in yet? No. No, this part is going to be blank. Absolutely. This is going to help you. Write your question. This is going to help you write your question. Yes, ma'am. Isn't the same with no and learned? I already know it. Oh. I already know it. I've learned it. So I have a short video that the beginning looks like um, the video that we saw earlier, but it is a completely different video. I promise you that. It is short. It looks similar because it's done by the same people. Um, can you get the lights over there, please? I mean, what did you do earlier? Hey! Okay, you ready to focus? Wait, can we move that paper? There's going to be nothing over there. Is that going to distract you? If it is, we can move it. Is it going to distract you? No. Okay. Put the front. That is a good time. How do you start research for writing an informational text? In this lesson, you will learn how to develop research questions by asking, what do I already know about the topic? Let's review. An informational text teaches you facts. So we have our nonfiction or real topic that we decided was powhatan settler relations. We also want to make sure we review the writing process. There are three steps, generate ideas, write drafts, and revise and edit. We're in the first stage, generate ideas, because we are thinking about what we know and what we don't know about our topic. A common mistake when thinking about what you know and don't know about your topic 
It's jumping right into your research without any direction. You want to make sure you plan out the questions you have about your topics and the answers so that when you're ready to write your draft, it'll flow very smoothly. Let's get started. First, create a KWL chart. Then ask, what do I already know about the topic? And finally, record what you know in the chart. First, create a KWL chart. And that looks like this, with three sections. The first section is for the no, that's the K, what you already know about the topic. The second is the W, what you want to know. These are the questions you have about your topic. And the L is learn for what you're going to learn about the topic when you find your resources. Then you're going to ask, what do I already know about the topic? So let's take a look at our topic, Powhatan Settler Relations. And I'm going to think about what I've learned in social studies class about Native Americans in Jamestown. And I know that Powhatans live near Jamestown because they were angry about the land, and so they had to live near them to be able to interact with them. And I also know that Pocahontas kept peace between the people. She was um, played a big role between them becoming peaceful later on, so I know that. And I also know that the Native Americans taught settlers about the land. I remember that it was very cold and they had a bad winter, and they helped them farm. So those are the things I already know about my topic. Now I'm going to record what I know in the chart. So here's my KWL chart again. And in the No section, I'm going to write, Powhatans live near Jamestown. They taught settlers about the land to survive. And Pocahontas kept peace between the people. So in later lessons, I'm going to fill in my W and my L section when I think about my questions and my answers. We created a KWL chart. We asked, what do I already know about the topic? And we recorded what we knew in the chart. In this lesson, you have learned how to develop research questions by asking, what do I already know about the topic? Okay, so that is one way to help yourself generate questions. You do not have to use a KWL chart. I'm just it will be your I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm just jotting ideas down. By yep, the way, so. you might choose to do that. What your assignment now is, and um, homework if you don't finish it now, is on pages 10, 11, and 12, and 13. There is a form. Um, I bet you it's my friend. It has feature article focus, opinion article questions, Choice article number one and choice article number two. Now, there are spaces for six questions here. You do not have to fill in six questions. You are writing magazine articles. Magazine articles are, what are they? Short and to the point. So do we want six questions that the article is about? That answering? No, that would be too long. It's like a 25 page research paper. We're doing short articles. So yes, you may come up with three questions, but you're going to have to, ch or six questions, but you need to come up with, choose only one or two. So if you only come up with one or two questions for your feature article, like somebody in another room is doing Missy Franklin, an Olympic swimmer. Um, so there may only be one or two <coughs> questions about Missy's life as a childhood, Missy's life as an Olympian. Opinion article, somebody doing baseball might do the opinion, should it be a wooden bat or a metal bat? So their question I mean, would be, what are the advantages to ba wooden bats? What are the advantages to metal bats? Or, or, Just two questions to focus in. Or. Right. So I don't expect you to have six questions times four articles. No, 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 no. You don't, don't feel it. If, you, if one idea, your feature article, you have six questions because you're just overflowing, that's okay. But we're going to have to narrow it down. No. Where it says type of question, that's, is it factual? What's a factual question? Something you learned from. It answers the question. What kind of question? Answers questions of. <coughs> answers the questions of. Hold on to it. Answers the questions of who, what, when, where, how. Why can be more interpretive. Or if, it, or if it's an interpretive question. 
if it's a judgment or a speculation or a hypothesis question. Um, your other question. When were we supposed to be doing topic time? By Friday. Done. <laughs> Before vacation. You need to have at least two down there and and one I would give you over vacation to absolutely solidify if you need it. But I want to see the ideas by Friday. Question. I have two questions. Um, one, what if we have more than six questions? Um, it would be, you can use an additional piece of paper, but I would recommend not having more than six questions because that will be really hard to focus okay. your writing. And the other is, um, I think it's written for two choice articles, but what if you want to do more than two? You just add another piece of paper and make the form. Um, my friend over there, did you have a question? Me? Yeah. Oh, I have a question. Yes. So, you did the, that. The, so, what well, is the question in case it's one you have? So it's here and it asks you questions. So do you ask like what you want to know? Yes. Or what you know? Yes, what you want to know. What you want to know. That's exactly. Good question. Any other questions? So the rest <coughs> of the class will be filling in your topic paper if you haven't done that. And your as many of your questions as you can. Notice, oh, that's your focus. Okay. Alrighty. Down to you two. can cut.